just in case you get a wee bit of RF there. I don't know, it could have been a voltage problem as well, which some cause, sometimes causes that wobble. Uh, but uh, it appeared there and then disappeared as quickly as it came. So. Today we're going to take a look at this Malahite DSP2 that was sent to me by Guzi Zoo. I'll leave a link for this in the description. This is a receiver, a very, very nice one at that. Nice, beautiful color screen. It's a touch screen, all metal body. It receives from 10 kilohertz to 380 megahertz, and then from 403.3 to 2 gigahertz. It's got a built-in 5,000 milliamp hour lithium battery. Does AM, SSB, DSB, CW, NFM, WFM. It does all the things and it does them very well. My first impression of this, the receiver on this is absolutely fantastic, which I would hope as it's a receiver. Absolutely blown away. This thing is a joy to listen to. So let's take a walk around the body. Again, it is an all metal body. It's definitely got a little bit of heft to it, uh, presumably aluminum. On the sides here, we've got a headphone output. It charges with USB-C. This can also be hooked up to a computer uh, with rig control and all that, so you can use this on your Windows computer. Unfortunately, I don't use Windows, so I won't be able to show that feature, but that's okay. We've got a standby slash power button, and then we also have an on-off switch and uh, I'll show you the standby power button. Sometimes with uh, these touch screens, you can get a little bit of noise just generated by the touch screen. So if you just short press the power button there, it turns the touch screen off. The radio is still on, but it turns the touch screen off. So in case you have some kind of interference, you can turn the uh, touch screen off. On the top, you've got uh, two different SMA antenna inputs. One is for high impedance, one is for 50 ohms. So I'll be using a 50 ohm antenna today, but if you're just gonna use like just a piece of wire, you would hook it up to this hi z uh, SMA port there. Today, we're gonna hook this up to my 80 meter NFET half wave uh, that is approximately 132 feet long. So we can uh, take a look at this, but very, very uh, easy to use. It comes with all kinds of stuff. So let's take a look at that. So we get this handsome carrying case. It's a nice hard shell case, got a strap there. The radio goes in there, says Malahite DSP SDR. It is a hard case, so it'll protect your uh, radio a bit better. Comes with a USB-A to USB-C, uh, presumably a charging and data cable. You got a little pouch here. Comes with a little telescopic whip that actually, <laughs> this is what impressed me about this radio. Just, just with this little, I mean, gosh, it's maybe a three foot whip with an S SMA male on it. I was picking up stations on 10, meter, just, 10 meters just sitting inside my house. So uh, that gives you a bit of an idea how good the receiver is. Comes with a dual purpose. One side, this is an ink pen. The other side is a little stylus. Again, this is a touch screen. We have different knobs. So this comes with two different style knobs. These are the style that come with it. They're a bit smoother where I opted to put these knurled knobs on and they just pull off. You just pull them off, put the other one on just like that. So you can see the difference between the knurled and the smooth knobs there. I kind of like the knurled ones better for uh, gives you a little bit, little bit of traction on the knob there. And inside there, there's also a little keychain ring that is gonna, you can connect it to that little nub there. That's your, uh, for a lanyard, which yes, it does come with a handsome hand strap there. For all you hand straps, kind of a, like a faux leather type of hand strap. So that's actually pretty darn nice hand strap as far as hand straps are concerned. Comes with a couple rubber baby buggy bumpers, presumably to affix to the bottom there if you wanna have some bumpers on there. And then this guy here is like a little kickstand, does like that, and there's like a little sticky thing here so you can stick it on the back and prop the radio up like such. So you got all kinds of accessories with this thing. And then we have the actual user manual itself uh, it's kind of a basic manual, but it does tell you kind of everything the radio does. I did read through this a couple times to really kind of fully understand it as best I could. It doesn't go into too much depth, 
Um, but it, it does touch on just about everything in the radio, so, um, and it's fairly well written in English. It's not perfect, but it's better than a lot of other manuals I've seen. So let's take a dive into this radio and see what it does. So with the flick of a switch, we can power it on. We'll be welcomed with a boot screen here in a second. Just like that, you can see the device ID number and uh, some other information there, but this is the meat and potatoes of it. So you have all kinds of things. You've got a, a spectrum graph here. You have a waterfall down here. It is touch screen, so you can just touch it and kind of move along the VFO if you want. But let's dive in uh, to the menus here first. First you have radio. If we click on that, you're gonna have all kinds of different menus in terms of how to listen to it. You've got your speaker out. You can either be headphones and speaker, just headphones or just speaker. Here is where you're gonna change the antenna that you're using. So the antenna port, notice it's green right now because we're on the 50 ohm antenna. If we switch that to high Z, it's blue. And now we're, uh, we would be on that antenna. We've got a preamp here so we can enable or disable the preamp. We have an attenuator that's actually controlled by the volume knob. If you see, there's a white line underneath ATT. If we press the volume knob, we can cycle through some different functions and we can go ahead and turn our attenuator to whatever level we want. This PGA boost, I have no idea what PGA BST stands for, but basically what this does, um, it's a pretty nice feature. If you have a really, really strong signal, I, I kind of think it's like an auto attenuator-ish, uh, but it basically, it makes it a lot nicer to listen to with really strong signals. That's about all I can tell you about it. You've got your RF gain adjustment. Uh, these LNA and mix GRs, these two guys have to do with um, basically the mixing in the, uh, the preamp stage. And just depending on what frequency you're on, um, higher frequencies or lower frequencies, they'll have different um, kind of functions. EMI reduction, this is like, uh, again, getting back to like what the screen can do because it's a touch screen. If you're having some electromagnetic interference from the screen, you can either enable that or disable that. Frequency correct, uh, beep level, I don't know what SM correct is. All kinds of stuff. This Bluetooth Connect, I don't know what it's for. A BT presumably is Bluetooth. I don't think this has Bluetooth, so I'm not really sure what that is. Uh, let's take a look at the audio menu. Here we have uh, like noise blanker, kind of a neat feature to have in a little receiver like this because if you're out mobile or whatever, kind of near near like things that would cause ignition noise, you can turn on a noise blanker. You've got automatic gain control, set that to slow, medium, or fast. Some of these, like some of them touch, some of them you have to use the volume knob to control. So we can see we have AGC fast, middle, slow, and long. We've got an EQ type. I think that's more for FM radio, but you can change like the equalization of it, you'll see like jazz and bass and rock and stuff like that. Uh, wide FM stereo, uh, auto notch filter, which is really nice for the uh, lower frequencies. It'll tune out, you know, if somebody's tuning up on there with a carrier, it'll, it'll, it'll reject that very well. Here you have different filter settings. So we can go normal, wide, uh, or narrow. And then here you can actually adjust your low frequency and your high frequency. So like all kinds of adjustments you can do with this radio. Then you've got your squelch thresholds here and your noise reduction threshold. The noise reduction on this thing is fantastic, by the way, we'll get to that in a little bit. If we go to this visual tab, this is kind of just some of the, well, visual settings. So for example, like here's the screen brightness. You can adjust that. You have a screen uh, brightness minimum, which would coincide with this reduct time. So basically after, a preset uh, amount of time. So like if I set this for five seconds, it would minimize the brightness to 29, just like that. You've got a waterfall uh, display here, which you can go from like white and black to black and white. I don't think these are very useful. There's black, uh, there's white and black. So you get a white waterfall. I can't really see anything on WB or BW. So I just leave it on classic. LCD sleep, FFT averaging, uh, FFT grid. So no grid here. Now we have a grid. We can also adjust that grid with this FFT scale. So let's bring that up to uh, the highest setting is 90. Now you can see you just have more resolution there. 
I like to keep it around 50. FFT color, you can change that. Let's try yellow. There's yellow, there's red, whatever color you want. This pan percent, that's how much of the screen you want to have for the pan adapter versus the waterfall. So for example, that's what 70 looks like. If maybe we want more waterfall, let's change that to 40. Now you can see we get more waterfall, so you can really customize the uh, actual display of this. So that's pretty neat. Waterfall delay, waterfall ga gain, FFT fill enable. So you see, oh, that looks nice. Let's make the pan percent more. So that's pretty cool versus disabled. So it just fills in the waterfall if you want that. That's pretty cool. We're gonna skip the noise reduction, but basically all the noise reduction button does is just a dedicated noise reduction button. So up here you can see the NR is not highlighted. Touch it and it is on and the noise reduction is fantastic. So let's go to the mode here. Here's where you can select different modes, CW, USB. It's got a CW decoder. It'll decode RIDI. You can listen to FT8, lower sideband. Um, I don't know what DSB is, but you got your AM here, narrow FM, wide FM, and all of that. If we hit the band button, here we have all of the different amateur radio bands and we can use the VFO up here to cycle between the different pages. So these are like shortwave listening bands and stuff. You've got air band, two meters, uh, all kinds of stuff, VHF, FM, 70 centimeters. So like everything's kind of just programmed in here, long wave, medium wave, everything's just in there and then you can make different presets or, or custom pages yourself if you want. So let's go back to 10 meters here. We've been listening to some 10 meters a bit today and we'll kind of show you how to navigate around the screen. Again, it is a touch screen. So by default, it's pretty wide. It's 192 kilohertz wide. If we touch anywhere in the waterfall portion, now we're at 96, so we can kind of zoom in and then we can zoom in as far as a 48 kilohertz span. So that's pretty cool. And then we can use the waterfall here. Like if we see a big uh, station, we can kind of tune in to where that is. If we press the VFO button here, the right button, we can change our tuning steps. Stations, station, 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 so that's with noise reduction off. Listen when I hit noise reduction. It's just gone. No noise reduction. And it's pretty quiet, even with noise reduction off. How cool is that? I mean, this thing just sounds fantastic. Very, very easy to use. So the volume knob here, if we press that, we can see we're cycling between attenuate, volume, and the filtering. We've got narrow, normal, and wide. Here's where we can adjust our attenuation. Goes all the way up to 30. And then our volume goes all the way up to 100. And then again with the VFO, if we press that, we can change our tuning step all the way down to uh, 10 hertz. And we can make it as wide as, oh boy, 50 kilohertz. So lots of different uh, ways to manipulate this radio and use it exactly how you want. So here's an insanely strong signal. I'll show you what that function does. So this PGA boost. Look at how it just cleaned it up. It sounds great now. We turn it off, this PGA BST. Do what it does. So like that. This guy's got a huge signal, he's 10, 15 over. Just what a great receiver. This thing is freaking awesome. I really like this. Now if we want to go to a specific frequency, we can just touch the frequency here and let's say I want to go to 14.300, whoops, dot 300 megahertz. Done, just like that. We're on 14300. It's, it's just so easy to use. So let's take a look at how well this CW decoder works. If we hit mode and then turn on CW decoder, make sure you're on CW. And I just set my minimum SNR to 20. I don't know what that means, but. I 
I mean, that's pretty darn impressive. I'm not going to lie. We also got some other fun things you can do if you go to band. Let's check out Air Band. And it's got the, it's got the line here so you kind of know, like, where the beginning and all and the ends of all the bands are so you can scan for air band traffic here you can also listen to fm broadcast so vhf fm let's hit that and you got this cool little display like it looks like an old school uh like radio display right how cool is that so you can touch up here and you can change things so like you can switch the user's profile so i've saved one just as rock so we can load that and you can do some pretty cool things with this if you touch down towards the bottom you can just like scan as a regular kind of shortwave radio you can touch the waterfall and it'll show you different it'll like show you different things about the frequency so like here's the pilot frequency here's I, I don't admittedly know much about shortwave receiving or what like the broadcast FM stations are doing but you can see the different signals if we touch this again you can go back to this scale, but you can also customize it. If we touch kind of towards the higher part of it, we can uh, switch the user. So for example, I just saved one as rock. I did an auto searching thing. So I just saved the channels that were uh, rock stations <laughs> of which I pick up two. One is 1049 here. And as we get on it, it'll turn like, see that turned red, got a big, uh, there you go, you can hear the music coming out of there. I don't want to get copyrighted. And then there's some commercials there. Let's go to radio, let's put this PGA BST. Turn that off. Again, kind of nasty and distorted. Turn it on, makes it really easy to listen to and nice. So that's pretty sweet. Let's touch up here again. And let's switch the user scale back to the regular one. So here we can touch this top part and if we hit auto search, this is going to search through all of the frequencies on FM broadcast and it's going to save them all. So once this is done, you can see pilot tone detected. It's picking up all the frequencies. So when this is done, I'll have a radio scanned for only the frequencies that I can hear at my home. So I'll come back once this is done. This takes a few minutes, so you got to be patient with it. And once it's done scanning, you can see all the different frequencies it found. We can go ahead and save that scale. We can rename it right now, it's called My Location 2, but you can rename it. You can just hit Clear Name. And then you use the VFO here to name it whatever you want. We'll just call it 2. Save and exit. So now we're on 2, and let me show you that. So now, instead of having all those frequencies filled in, this is just the frequencies that it picked up. So we kind of know where the FM channels are. So that's pretty cool. So that's everything in my area, but if we want to go back, maybe I just want to hear the rock ones, change that back to rock, hit exit, and then there's the two rock stations. Unfortunately, we can't touch on it to go to it. You still have to use the VFO, but that's pretty awesome. And you can like add frequencies too. So if we go to add edit station, we can use the VFO and let's say there's a station there, add and continue, exit, exit, and now there's that station. If we want to get rid of it, touch that, Add edit station, delete station, exit, exit, now it's gone. So very customizable, that's really cool. So I gotta say, I am uh, very, very impressed with this thing. If you're just into shortwave listening or if you're just traveling and can't bring a, an actual like ham radio transceiver with you but you still wanna just monitor the bands, something like this is a really, really cool thing to have in your arsenal, man. So uh, thanks to Guzi Zoo for sending this out, for letting us take a look at it. I will leave an affiliate link in the description below. You can pick this up on Amazon. And uh, that's all we got for today, guys. The Malahite DSP2 shortwave, or just everything receiver, basically, all in one tiny, I mean, it fits in the palm of your hand. Look at that. So that's all we got today, guys. My name is Mike Cade. I'm already, thanks for watching Ham Radio 2. We'll see you next time, 73.